We're now into our number three, Ray McGovern. It was one of the chief uh, morning briefers and analyst, of course, in George Herbert Walker Bush's administration. Uh, also a uh, Army veteran uh, is our guest. I, I, I wanted to get him on to talk about WikiLeaks uh, because I've seen him saying, look, this is a big deal. The media is spinning it off into, you know, why do WikiLeaks do this? Should they get in trouble? Instead of looking at what's in these documents and how Afghanistan is unwinnable, at least from the public uh, perspective of, of, of what the system claims the war is for. And then we're going to get into Iran. Uh, more and more, it looks like they're green lighting an attack uh, sometime as an October surprise. We'll talk to Ray McGovern about that as well. Ray, it's always great to have you. Thanks for coming on. You're most welcome. Uh, WikiLeaks, give us your breakdown on it. Well, there are a lot of interesting things about it. Uh, substantively, it shows that uh, the war is uh, clearly a misbegotten effort, largely because uh, Pakistan, their security services, the ISI, uh, are supporting the Taliban, uh, funding them training them, leading them in battle. <laughs> it's quite remarkable. These, uh, these army uh, documents, you know, th these are official documents, uh, recognized as authentic by the administration now. Uh, they paint a picture of uh, the uh, inter-service inter uh, uh, intelligence unit there in, in uh, Pakistan, taking the billion of dollars that we give them every year, and turn it around and uh, making sure that the insurgency uh, uh, prospers, really. Uh, and so, you know, this whole business about, the, you know, the border areas and we need to get the Pakistanis to realize that they need to throw their lot in with us. Well, what really strikes me as bizarre is uh, you get people like uh, our Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, goes down to Islamabad and says, now... Uh, to the Pakistani leaders, she said, you, you really shouldn't be afraid of, of India. Indy. I just came from India. They're very nice people there, and they, they, they told me they wish you no harm. And so don't be worried about it. India. Be worried about terrorists. Be worried about Taliban and al-Qaeda. That's what you should worry about. Now, Alex, anybody who knows anything about the history of the subcontinent, it knows that you're not going to uh, be able to persuade the Pakistanis to worry about anybody else but India and vice versa. And so how does this impact on Afghanistan? Well, the way that the Pakistanis ensure or try to ensure that India no longer uh, has a, a pre preeminent influence in Kabul and the rest of Afghanistan is to have their own assets. And those assets are ones that they created on our behalf many years ago. They call the Taliban. And they're going to play that card forever. And uh, it's just a matter of time before uh, before the, the feckless counterinsurgency tactics realize that there's an external supply of people and weapons and everything else, just as there was in Vietnam, by the way. You know, when the North kept supplying the troops in the South, so we were going to interdict the, interdict the, the supply, right? And, and we couldn't do that. Then what do we do? We bomb the North. So what do we do in Pakistan? We're bombing Pakistan, this time with fancy, fancy drone stuff where nobody gets shot down and gets killed. Give me a break. It's the most feckless exercise that I've ever seen, and these documents prove it beyond reasonable belief. Now, uh, beyond, beyond reasonable doubt, let's say. Now, uh, the, uh, the White House, three days ago, uh, dictated to the uh, stenographers, they, they, they call themselves the White House Press Corps, and they all took the dictation, namely, nothing new here. You know, I said, oh, we know all that stuff. We took that into account when we made our big decisions late last year and all this stuff. And so that goes up in the headlines in the Washington Post and the other papers. It's ridiculous. Uh, they should read the documents, for Pete's sake, but they're being discouraged to do that. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of back in uh, two, uh, 2005 when uh, the Downing Street memo was released. Does that sound like we have to break here? Uh, if we do... Alex yes, sir. Stay there. We're going to come right back. I just didn't want to interrupt you to continue uh, with uh, your view of WikiLeaks, how the media is trying to spin it. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. All right. Former CIA analyst and uh, morning briefer to George Herbert Walker Bush and others. Um, a guy who's really made a lot of accurate predictions and breakdowns here on this show joins us. We were talking about WikiLeaks and what that means to the Afghan war. 
in the last year I've seen all these denials that, oh, there's not advisors, there's not Army and CIA advisors in Pakistan. You know, that's a lie. That There's no Blackwater there. Now these documents confirm that. But just in the last week, I guess ahead of these, they came out and admitted, okay, days before this came out, we do have advisors in Pakistan. And it does seem the way they spun this is to point it at Hamid Ghul, the former head of Pakistani intelligence, and say, see, we kind of need to be there. But I don't think that's the fault of WikiLeaks so much of the media just, just spinning it. But I know Ray McGovern can comment on that. And are there big connections from Pakistani intelligence to the Taliban and why? And then I want to get into Iran and the war drums really getting more and more intense on that front. But uh, you, were, you were cut off by the break, uh, Ray. Uh, please continue. Sure. I was just uh, trying to uh, raise a comparison here between the WikiLeaks uh, uh, treatment by the fawning corporate media and the way the same fawning corporate media treated the revelations in the after Downing Street minutes. Uh, you'll recall that those were minutes recording the chief uh, uh, British spy telling Tony Blair uh, that George Bush had decided to go to war with Iraq for regime change, that this war would be, quote, justified, end quote, by the conjunction of weapons of, mili of, of mass destruction and terrorism, translation from the British, uh, will say that he has all kinds of mass, uh, weapons of mass destruction and that he's going to use them, give them to terrorists. And finally, that crowning sentence for us intelligence specialists, it went this way, quote, but the intelligence and facts are being fixed around the policy, period, end quote. So that was a manifest information, documentary information, the minutes of the meeting written by a participant the same day, and it showed that the intelligence was being fixed. And that was July, the middle of July 2002, some eight or nine months before the war. Now, in this case, well, in that case, the New York Times avoided even mentioning it until uh, Representative Conyers uh, held that hearing at which I testified. And two mornings before the hearing, uh, he and I were both on Amy Goodman. And uh, uh, that very morning, the Washington Post had, uh, published an editorial saying, oh, yes, and there are these after Downing Street minutes. Um, they have, uh, they are of no consequence. We knew that all the time. <laughs> I had to laugh because my thought was, you know, if the Washington Post knew that the intelligence was being fixed all the time, yeah, it really, I don't know exactly why they didn't tell us. Can you get, can you hazard a guess on that, that Alex? So, um, so the the situation here is the same. They don't want anybody to read them. They don't want anybody to analyze them. And even the New York Times, uh, which was forced to uh, to publish this because they knew that the Guardian in London and the Der Spiegel in Hamburg. Uh, that they both had them, and they would be scooped, and it would be very embarrassing for people to realize that the New York Times had these documents and hadn't published them. So what did they do? They went to the White House and said, you know, we're in this bind. We don't want to be scooped, and is it okay if we can? And, <laughs> and the White House was very understanding. He said, oh, shucks, I guess this time you can. And uh, Robert Gibbs, the president's spokesman, later complimented the responsible way that the New York Times conducted themselves. I tell you, I tell you, Alex. If it, if the press has to go to the White House to receive permission to publish things, then that's the responsible way to act. We've come one heck of a long way in the free press of this country. Uh, uh, do you think this is going to have as much as an effect on the Afghan slash Pakistan conflict as the Pentagon Papers with Daniel Ellsberg and the Rand Corporation uh, did f to the Vietnam War? Alex, uh, I've often said that the biggest sea change that I've witnessed in this town of Washington in the 47 years I've been here is that there's no longer in any real sense a free press. There was back in the 70s. There was in the 60s. We got rid of a president because of a free press. There is none now. And so it all depends on whether the defunct fourth estate has been replaced by a vibrant fifth estate. And that's the good news, folks. There's a fifth estate out there, a free media. Uh, the medium is the ether. It's not susceptible of control by governments or advertisers or corporations which don't own it. Uh, and we have the WikiLeaks phenomenon and many other uh, phenomena that, uh, that feed on, on the availability of this, this wonderful resource. And so 
So even though the fourth estate is dead, and uh, we should duly mourn it because it's a travesty to have those folks stenographing uh, there in the White House, um, the fifth estate is vibrant. And so I think that if people uh, are given enough information, you know, it's impossible for everybody to read all these uh, army documents, but if, um, if there's a, uh, if people know where to look for real information on this, and that's the missing link. Um, in speaking around town here, I've been referring often to the WikiLeaks exposure of that turkey shoot, that god-awful turkey shoot that, that our soldiers there in that Apache helicopter gunship, um, the gun barrel photography, the, the video on that with sound showing our young people just gloating over the turkey shoot of about a dozen Iraqi civilians minding their own business, uh, severely injuring two children.